So then, we are back with the modern understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation is from the original Hebraic manuscripts of the past, from the time of the Hebrews of old, from the prophets of Israel. And it's becoming extremely clear the time periods versus prophecy and time. We have reached the 61st chapter of Yeshiahu, depicted in 61st chapter in the previous covenant and we are during the time of the rebuilding or the restoration we did understand first then the time of the Gentiles is composed by a couple of layers the layer of the rulership secularly in the earth the examples come then from the time of Daniel the statesperson during the time he was then a politician in the uh, court of the king of Babylon then we have the understanding of heaven. Then this period of time of 2,000 years and started when the Messiah spent a couple of days with the Samaritans. He was then obviously during the time of the completion of the spring feast. Try to understand. He was then during the spring feast in Leviticus the 23rd chapter from the first verse until the 21st verse gives you the entire set of the spring feast then he had to give the introduction to those Gentiles of the 22nd verse the 22nd verse then gives you do not cut the corners of the field where then the Gentiles they're going to try on their own explain heaven yet every time they tried they couldn't do it so they had to come back and eat the corners of the field so they put a bit understanding of heaven and a bit of their own, a bit of heaven, a bit of their own. And the Messiah at the end say, if you don't even hot or cold, then you're vomited out. So when the Messiah, he spent those couple of days with the Samaritans, it is precisely then Leviticus the 23rd chapter 22nd verse. The entire writing of Ruth is then equivalent of this period of time. 2,000 years he spent, those are depicted in two days. Two days he spent with the Samaritans. He spent time with the Samaritans around 4031. So then from that time started then the secular rulership of the Gentiles plus their understanding of the Messiah. They knew who he was. But as we understand, then when the Messiah was going to Jerusalem to observe the feast, the Samaritans refused. Thus, giving you the understanding they want to have their own Messiah. They had their own set up laws and they made their own understandings of it. However, this was more evident in and a thousand and nine or sixty or nine later when it finished but then and a thousand and nine from two thousand and nine was then a thousand years when then the world made a declaration they no longer want the Messiah then Satan the destroyer went to prison and his facet of the deceit had taken over does then Gentiles they are trying to depict what heaven is like mixed with their own rulership? It's becoming more clear. A couple of layers, and the first layer is gone. In 6009 or 2009, then it was ended. Churches are a fraud. So then the time is returning for the truth where then the Messiah is found only in a holy of holies of each tabernacle. Thus what he said was go around the world and form holy tabernacles as per the design of Moses. So when you hear in the 23rd chapter of Mitzchiah the first gospel he said to the scribes and the people of the law and also the disciples, Whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe, these do and observe. Because he knew they had to take the understanding from the time of Moses and set up camp in the future. However, from singular to plural. Because the authority from heaven was given to him in the earth for his people then to execute the plan of Moses, but then via grace.
in the tabernacles. This is the truth. Later then, the first perfect tabernacle example was during the time of Yohanan. He was not on the island of Patmos. He was on the mainland. Thus, when you hear a person had a vision or dream, vision must be in a camp. So he was in a camp in the mainland. And he had the vision. Then later, many of the camps became popular until 1009. Then Satan persecuted those camps so much, and they had nothing more to destroy. He had then his rulership for a thousand years. From 1009 to 2009 from the Creator's calendar from the time of until 6009 was the end of it started in 5009 so the timing is lining up with it and at this time of 6012 or 2012 we are ahead then in the time of the return of the truth So the lies of the past, then they are no longer active. Those are gone. We must re-educate ourselves with the Hebraic understanding and understand the second tabernacle services. Thus only remain the rulership of the Gentiles secularly. And as per instruction, we understand China is the leading force of the end. The whole world is going to be turned to China of their ways of doing trade and market. Thus, when you read that the nations would do trade with her, China is the motherland. So then you understand where it comes from. So then Yerushiahu, he was then, during the period of time, we understand that he was 740 years before the birth of the Messiah. The Messiah was born in 3999. You were able to find when he was born because the computer system was able to reverse the time based upon the data of the great star recorded in heaven, astronomy, and also the lunar eclipses. So based upon the spacing of the time, the computer was able to calculate and found per lunar eclipse. He was born in 3999, first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkah. That's why he tabernacled with us. Mid-Tishri. Thus the king was born. So then, understanding from 3999 minus 740, places it in a range of 3259 to 3299 when Yershiahu then prophesied. 61st chapter is within this time. And he was speaking of the time of restoration because he was speaking of the city and the cities. The understanding from heaven gives you then the simultaneous understanding of the desert city, the city of God, the city of Yahweh, the city of Elohim and His people. People are bound then by temporal understanding of cities, of cities in the earth. No, he was speaking of the city in a desert, the city of God. Then the promised land came, he had, had then a transfer, Moses had to transfer then the tabernacle onto the promised land. Prior of these, obviously the people were delegated to do this task because he died before. But the understanding of the city then remains from the tabernacle's desert. That's where to get our reference from city. Then the Messiah came and he brought the first anointing for the second service. Thus, tabernacle services. So then our time, after the first thousand, and then the other thousand, and then the two thousand on top of it, only remains the rulership of the Gentile, secularly. Understanding from heaven returns as the truth, as during the time of Yohanan. 
and the cities are being rebuilt. So the truth is re-established. That's where we are at, at the moment. And then we can find references of then the time of the end. Countries trying to come together under the true understanding of the second thousand. But then the second thousand is the time of the seat. Then you found first, then the first thousand was true. His people would rule from their camps, giving directives only. The Gentiles would have to rule on their own after receiving the information. The second thousand truly was after 1009 until 2009. Has ended in 09. Now we are transitioning back to the truth. Only remaining the rulership of Gentiles secularly. Because must be honored at 2,000 years given by two days the Messiah spent with the Samaritans. And this time is being reduced so then the elect can return to their services. So the prophecies are true and very precise in fact. Then when you read the other prophets, those big numbers of the prophets and the feasts, they must have lined up with this timeline. So when you read then the many feasts and those seven times seven and then many sevens and a half a seven and a half a time and a half a time, those from the time they are talking, from period of times of feasts and sets of sevens, it must end in Revelation. As we understand then the 2000 years in the technical understanding ends in 6031. From 6031 to 6032. That's when the time of the Gentiles expires without the reduction. Let's say if Yahweh decides the reduction should be a day or two, 6031 would be the maximum. But we know that there is more time involved. It's going to reduce more time. So then after the ending of the Gentiles' time, then starts the vengeance. Another 490 days. And then the earth ends. <laughs> the time has expired. So this junky idea of going to heaven someday and then you're going to face up the Messiah up there and before his desk and give an understanding of your time on the earth, uh-uh-uh, doesn't exist. So then Yerushiah is giving us precisely, absolutely precisely, then we must understand the concept of the time because there are sections of the previous covenant where then there are some words they must be then placed in a proper context. When Yahweh was including then the Gentiles in the rebuilding time, then his people would boast not on the Gentiles but then on Yahweh. So there is a, a tiny Understanding of there, they must be rather than Gentiles, than Yahweh. They would boast or they would be glad because of what Yahweh is doing in the earth. So then after the cities then they begin to be rebuilt and then the saved in the Messiah begins to pray in each Kadosh Kadoshim then after some time then the temple is going to be rebuilt. So then comes first the cities, because the Messiah, the lasting standing orders of the Messiah then were go around the world to then form holy tabernacles, as per the design of Moses. And then teach the people what you have learned so far from the time of Moses and from the time of the Messiah. Then teach the people. However, wait at the temple, 
at the house of prayer until Ruach HaKodesh comes. And then he did come. And then the column of fire that the people had in the desert when it was separated the Egyptians and the Hebrews, the same column of fire came down in the house of prayer. And the first function came, tongues interpretation of tongues. From then on, then the Shalishim, they began to go out, and they were then the first task, gathering his own people in the region and to cluster them. So they began to cluster. Then by the time of Yahanan, around a hundred years later, was then the perfect first camp example of then what the Messiah told them to do. That's why he had the visions. And then from the time of Yahanan, there were many camps around the world. During the time of the world, speaking of the Asian world. That's why Asia is so prosperous these days, because they were receiving teachings from yet the kingdom to come government of how to do trade, how to be trusting, how to be kind, how to do trade with the system. That's why China is leading, because they have learned from the time of Shaul the Shaliak. And the other nations, obviously they're going to be busy rebuilding. So then we must re-educate ourselves in the Hebraic way of thinking. It's extremely important, thinking in a Hebraic understanding, because when Shaul, he wrote, Renew your minds with the Word. What was the period of time Shaul was speaking of? Did he have then Galatians? No. Corinthians? No. Romans? No. He was speaking of the Torah. Because he was revealing to the people the shadow understandings of the Torah. The completion of the Spring Feast... And then they themselves transitioning from the first to the second service. And then the people clustering. And the Gentiles then, they were giving directives. That's why you find in Corinthians, in Galatians, sometimes Shaul was then teaching his own people first. But then he found his own people mixed with other peoples. And they should not do this. Because the holy people should never mix themselves as per the instructions from the time of Abraham. They should never mix. But they were mixed. So Shaul had to do an emergency plan. That's why he said then, when you are then engaged with the heathen, make sure they understand what it means. And some of them were already involved with the temple prostitution and eating eat, sacrifice to demons. That's why Shaul had to give them instructions. They were giving directives. That's why he said, when you have then a husband, make sure you have only a husband or a wife. Render then the uh, love to your husband and vice versa. Because there were people mixed with the holy Hebraic people. And Shaul could not reject them. That's why he came with emergency plans. So then if you have your husband and your wife, then you are doing fine. If you then eat, make sure when you buy meat in the market, make sure it's a clean meat. If you know that the meat is sacrificed, don't eat it. However, if you go then to the market and you buy it, eat it with the conscience clear. As long as it's clean meat. Because it was speaking with people mixed with the Hebraic people. And then the transitional time continues. Until then, around a hundred, when Yahanan was in the perfect example of the camp. Then there were many camps afterwards. Then around a couple hundred years later, then came this crazy Constantine. Maniac and murderer. Then he decided to change the laws. That then came then the Greco and the Romans later, 
changing the scripture, coming up with their own ideas of heaven. Later became the first thousand years where then Satan ruled, thinking he could change the minds of the people with lies. But it didn't work. It ended in 6009. Now we are returning to the truth. So when we are studying the time periods of the prophets, that is extremely important for a person to understand Yerushiahu. It's absolutely important. He was the most important prophet of the writings of the prophets. Not beyond Moses, but a person that was then given extras for the future understanding of the prophetic. From then afterwards, after Yerushiahu comes Daniel. He was a politician. With those, only those two prophets, you can establish the basis of the timeline. Yerushiahu speaks of the holy, Daniel speaks of the secular. Understanding the relation from heaven and earth. Daniel also spoke of heaven. But since we are in the 12th chapter, where clay does not mix with iron, it's solely understanding of then the time of the politics of the time. And then the 61st chapter. References you find also in Zechariah the 12th chapter, and also Ezekiel the 38th. Any other prophet that you find with big numbers, must be traced along the line with the other prophets. It must end then in the autumn feast, either by sets of sevens or by seasons or actual numbers. Counts from the time the prophecy is given until the autumn feast. Because the vengeance is only 490 days. Half of the Torah, half of the prophets. So people are re-educating themselves in how to read those prophecies. And those are traced back to the instructions. The entire understanding of the whole First service and second service found in Leviticus. But then future understanding was in the form of the shadows. Time period is linking heaven and then earth. Prophetic and time. So then, a single line from Yerushiahu is already enough to give you your bearings on counting the time. Only a single line from the time of Yerushiahu. The time of his ministry was from 3259 to 3299. Gives you in this period of time at least your starting point. Then you come from right to left, from 3999 when he was born, then to our time, 6009, ended then the time of the seed, and we are in 6012. So then you flush away these crazy dates from B.C., B.C.E., and, and A.C., and A.D., blah, blah, blah. You use plain numbers. So from 3999 when he was born, you subtract the 740, comes to 3259. 3259 plus 40 years, 3299. That's the period of time where the 61st chapter came. From there you draw a line until the closing of the age. And then Daniel the 12th chapter, you then place another line. But understand, the 12th chapter speaks of the end where we are at. That's why we start then with the 12th chapter. At the end, many people will go to and fro, meaning confusion. 
and knowledge would increase so much that the Creator had to do and come and give His prophecy to make sure people understand there is a Creator. Otherwise the knowledge becomes destructive. They don't know what to do with it. They must recognize the Creator. But the divine clock ticks. We are already in 6012. The rulership of the Gentiles, circularly speaking, ends in 6031. From 6031 to 6032 without a reduction. So there is not much time left. And the Messiah said at the end people would be giving each other to relationships and, and then going to and fro in the earth. They would not even bother with it. And then he gave the understanding layered with Noah. Then the Vesuvius came and caught them unawares. That's why Shaul said, don't be ignorant of the times and seasons. He was speaking of the Torah, the seasons of the Torah, Leviticus. Spring feast, you have the spring feast, gives you the seasons. And then the autumn feast gives you also the feasts of the season. From those seasons you would construct your time, base your timeline with the prophetic and time in the earth. So then his people would not be caught as most of the Gentile with a stupid scripture not knowing what to do with and going to and fro. So then from Yerushiahu draw a line from right to left. Starts then in 3259. Then you draw a line until our time, 60-12. That's the timeline from the 61st chapter. Then, in 60-09, end the period of deceit. Thousand years earlier, 50-09 was then the destruction of the temple. Plus another 70 years. So then from the time of then 5009 was in the time where then the tomb was destroyed, not the temple, the tomb. That's what it was. The tomb was destroyed. The temple was then a thousand years earlier. That's what it was. We're in the temple period, second temple period. That's what it was. So then 5009 was the destruction of Jerusalem and the tomb. And then another thousand where the time then his people were then ruling from the holy camps. Then comes when he ascended was in 4031, 4031, 4032. And the time he spent with the Samaritan was from 40, 31, 40, 31 and a half. So they began to make those timelines. It's fairly simple. But the most important reference point from the time of a transition from his people to Satan's was in the 1009, or then you find 5009 per the Creator's calendar. In 5009, the destructive character of Satan went to prison because then the cities were destroyed, laid waste. Then the great period of the deceit of churches started mostly around a thousand. Read history. Then a thousand years later you find 6009, the time of deceit from Satan had ended. His plan did not work in combining Gentile rulership secularly plus their understanding of heaven 
didn't work. So then we are returning to the truth. However, then the rulership of the entire Gentiles remained. Comes from China. They are going to lead the end of time trade. And the nations would do trade with her. Because Europe is in trouble. They try to do their own understanding of heaven and earth. And didn't work. So the euro is then being dismantled. And the broken countries such as the Greco country. They came up with a false Messiah. Most people believed. The country is busted. They have to do trade with China in a basis of exchange. And to start up their economy. So as the other countries. Then 6 to 12 we are at. So then the people, the selected or the elected are going to resume the second service. That's the rebuilding of the cities. Then each city they're going to be praying together. At some point then Jerusalem is going to be cleansed. And the temple rebuilt. While the other countries are doing their work. They are rebuilding themselves. And the military of China is for the solely understanding of delivery of cargo. Cargo. 